Testing, testing. One, two, three. Are you receiving me? Reading you loud and clear. Would you like a cup of tea? Yes, please. A cup of tea and a slice of cake, please. Okay, no problem. I'll do that now. Hey everyone, we've made a walkie-talkie based around the ESP32. There's a link in the description to the Fusion 360 project and the STL files for the case, so feel free to print your own version if you want to. Let's have a look at what's inside and see how it works. We have the microphone. I've made space for my own ICS43434 breakout board and space for the popular INMP441 microphone board. These are both I2S microphones that interface directly with the ESP32. Above the microphone, we have an I2S 3 watt amplifier board that's powering our speaker. This also directly interfaces with the ESP32. Then we have our ESP32 board. I'm using a tiny Pico here, but you should be able to use any generic ESP32 dev board. We're not using any special features in this project. We've got a push button switch for controlling transmitting, and we've got a simple slider switch to turn the battery on and off. You may have noticed that I'm using a custom PCB. I got this made up by the great people at PCB Way. As usual, they did a good job and I'm really pleased with how the boards have come out. I've got lots of audio projects and it's really nice to be able to just plug things together and not have to worry about jumper wires going everywhere. The only slight omission I've made is not breaking out the remaining GPIO pins, so I think I'll do that in version 2 of the board. I've included a link to both the schematic and the project on PCBWay in case you want to order your own version. You can also clone the project on EasyEDA and customise it for your own needs. Having said that, you really don't need a PCB. You can easily just connect everything up on breadboard, and that's exactly what I did when I was prototyping. The schematic is very simple. We're using I2S boards for both the microphone and the speaker, which makes the wiring up of these to the ESP32 very straightforward. You can of course modify the code to use the built-in ADC for input and the built-in DAC for output. Very handy if you want to use analog microphone boards and a headphone jack for output. I've added a bit of extra circuitry to my board to create a clean power supply for the microphones. If you watch some of my earlier videos, then you'll recall that we were picking up quite a lot of noise on the microphones when using Wi-Fi. Testing, testing, one, two, three. To fix this noise problem, we're creating a clean 3.3 volt power supply for the microphones. We do this by taking a direct feed from the battery we filter this with an LC filter and then pass this to a low dropout regulator. This gives us a really nice clean power supply for the microphones which removes a lot of the noise issues. Testing, testing, one, two, three. I've got quite a few videos on audio input and output which you might find interesting. I've linked to these in the description. That's really all there is on the hardware side of things. So how does it actually work? All the code is on GitHub. I've put a link in the description. It should be mostly self-explanatory, but I'll give a high level overview here. The main challenge with this project is how to get the audio broadcast from one walkie talkie to all the other walkie talkies. I've implemented this in two different ways. You can easily switch between these in the code with a simple hash define. The first way is using UDP broadcast. UDP broadcast is a very simple mechanism. You send a packet to a special IP address and your router broadcasts this packet to all the other devices on your network. We can safely send up to 1436 bytes in a UDP packet. So if we're sampling at 16 kilohertz and using 8-bit samples, that's around 90 milliseconds of audio data. So we need to be sending around 11 packets per second. This is well within the capabilities of the ESP32. The big advantage of using broadcast UDP is that we don't need to know about our peers. 
We can just broadcast a message and anyone who is listening for it will receive it. We also don't need a centralised server that everything connects to. All the heavy lifting is done by the router. However, there are some disadvantages of UDP that we should be aware of. Delivery of UDP packets is only best effort. There is no guarantee that someone will receive the packet that you send. There's also no guarantee of packet ordering. Someone may receive the packets you have sent in a completely random order. For this project, I've chosen to ignore these two issues. With broadcast packets, we're generally staying in the same network, so we probably won't lose too many packets. Our packets will also probably come in the correct order. If they don't, then we'll just get a bit of noise and distortion on the audio. The other big advantage of UDP broadcast is that you can receive the packets on your desktop computer or even your phone, so it would be quite easy to create an additional client that's not based around the ESP32. The second way I have implemented the transport is to use ESP Now. ESP Now is a protocol developed by Expressive, which enables multiple ESP devices to communicate with each other without needing Wi-Fi. This gives us one great advantage over the UDP option in that we don't need to have a Wi-Fi network to make our walkie-talkie work, so you could use your walkie-talkies outside. The disadvantage with ESP Now is that it has a much smaller packet size of 250 bytes. This means that we need to be sending packets 64 times a second. We also have all the same downsides as UDP broadcast. Packet delivery is best effort, and there's no guarantee what order the packets will arrive in. However, in my test, it seems to have performed reasonably well. With the transport problem solved, we just need to hook everything up. We have the I2S input, this reads samples from the microphone and passes them to our transport. Once the transport has accumulated enough data to fill a packet, it sends the data through either UDP or ESP now. On the other side, we have the same transport listening for packets. Every time a packet is received, it queues the data up for playing via our I2S output. The I2S output just pushes samples out to the I2S amplifier. To allow for packets taking slightly longer to arrive, we have a buffer between the transport and the I2S output. We let a small amount of time elapse before we start playing the samples. This gives us some spare time to allow for packet jitter. It does come at the cost of some latency in the audio. With all of this taken into account, using UDP, audio is played about half a second after it was made. All in all though, the project works. Quality is not amazing, but it's certainly sufficient for a hobby project and sounds like a fairly low quality uh, walkie talkie. As always, the code is all on GitHub. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you have any improvements, then please open a pull request. Some ideas that would be good to look at Compression of the audio to reduce bandwidth. Some kind of automatic gain control. Echo cancellation, so we can have full duplex transmission. And I'm sure there's much, much more that could be improved. So feel free to hack away. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly had fun making it. And if you did enjoy it, please hit the subscribe button. There's more videos coming soon. So I'll see you in the next video.